sure. and supporting our students. Happy to. Um, okay, great. I'll just jump in then. Uh, my name is Christina. I am the West Coast. Sorry, you're hearing my sister's dog. I'm at my sister's house in Colorado. So if you hear barking, that's what it is. Um, I am the West Coast Casting Outreach Rep for Backstage. I run all of our West Coast film partnerships. I'm slowly moving my way east. I'm now all of the Western states from about Colorado, Wyoming over. So um, we partner with film schools in a bunch of different ways, but one of the ways that we do is providing some education around the casting process, what good casting looks like, how to use the site a little bit, although they've made the site pretty user-friendly at this point, and so we tend to focus more on the casting element these days. Um, but so what I thought I would do is, um, if I can, am I able to share my screen? Yes. Um, talk to you a little bit about what Backstage is as a platform, talk to you a little bit about what the casting process should look like, um, and then hopefully have some time to answer some questions. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, I know I talk pretty fast. So if I'm ever being unclear, throw up a hand and we'll we'll back up and recover it. Um, but I think especially for these first few projects that you're working on, casting is such an important part of the process. And for me, outside of my work for Backstage, I write and direct, I'm a filmmaker. And for me, casting is my favorite part of the process. It's when things really become real. Um, you get to start seeing your film take on shape and um, yeah, get to get to see it become something other than just words on a page. So um, let me share my screen really quick and then we'll walk you through backstage and what we offer as part of our partnership and all that good stuff. Um, so if you're brand new to backstage, the most important thing for you to know is that there's two sides to the site. The first is our actor side and they pay a flat monthly fee for a subscription to have a profile on the site and apply to jobs. Those, those are a monthly fee. The other side of the site is for filmmakers and that account is free. So that's the most important thing. If you are just casting via the account, if you're not a performer, make sure you're signing up for that free filmmaker account. Um, you'll see that black bar across the top and you'll just click backstage for and then film TV, video and TV production. We do verify um, everybody that joins and posts a casting notice. So the quickest way to get verified is using your student email to start your account. And then listing LMU as um, your company name on your profile. When you graduate, you'll be able to change all of that information. But for now, having LMU in, in multiple places and using your uh, .edu, <coughs> excuse me, email address, that's all gonna help us verify your account faster and get you casting faster. A couple of things to think about before you start the casting process um, is that the most important thing is that these casting notices are aimed at the actors. <clears throat> you want to make sure that you're thinking through your project as far as what's interesting to an actor. The other thing is that there's kind of two, two ways to go about casting. One is if you need something really specific, young children, people with skills, stunt performers, nudity, all of those things are totally options. You just have to know that that's gonna make the casting process take a little bit longer. If all you're looking for is really talented performers, it doesn't matter so much what they look like, or you have a little flexibility on age, the process moves along a little bit faster. Both are fine. I just think it's important to think about what kind of casting you're doing before you start and jump into the process. The last thing that I'll say before you get started with your casting notice, is that if you need any help filling it out, I'm gonna give you a bunch of resources to reach out to us for help. I'm happy to always answer questions. We're gonna walk through what makes a good casting notice here, but if you wind up with questions, always feel free to reach out. Um, so this is what the casting notice form looks like on Backstage. The most important fields here for you to think about are your production description and your role description, because this is where you're gonna tell actors what kind of footage they're gonna get. When we don't pay actors for projects, which I know the majority of your student work will be very low pay or no pay at all, the magic phrase you need to memorize is meals, copy, and credit, right? That means that the actors get fed on your set, they get a copy of your footage to add to their own reel, and they get credited, which means they can add it to their resume. When we're talking about the production description and the role description, I see a lot of these come through that say a six-minute student film, which is accurate. You're describing your project but it's not interesting to the actors. Remember, filling out this form, you wanna fill it out to be read by your actors. You're trying to entice them into being part of your project. So thinking about your role description and your character description or your production description and your role description from that actor perspective 
will help you craft something that's interesting. Your log line is great for this box. The other thing that I think has become really important to put in your production description is one sentence about your COVID safety plan. Um, whatever the school's policy is, everybody needs to be vaxxed, everybody needs to wear masks, everybody's gonna get tested, wherever you fall on that spectrum. Give us a sentence about that because actors are on a spectrum of comfort levels getting back on set right now. And so we wanna make sure that we are being clear about where your production falls on that spectrum so that you get actors who are genuinely interested in your project. Um, beyond that, the majority of this is very simple to fill out. The, the only other thing that I think is sometimes misleading is things like age range. We give you a ton of options to get really specific about your characters. And when it's necessary, I think it's great to get specific. You're casting a character that's based on a real person, right? So you wanna get specific and have them look like the real person or you're casting a character who you've already cast a lead and now you're casting their little brother and you want those two people to look alike, right? In those instances, we give you a ton of options to get specific. Where you can though, the more you can leave your character description open, you're gonna have a much better experience with casting. If you start to think about actors and characters as a type, as a personality and not as a physical description, you're gonna open yourself to actors who might not look the way that you see characters in your head, but they're bringing something really valuable via their performance. So where we give you like gender, ethnicity, age range, where you need to be specific, be specific. And the general rule with age is the younger your characters are, the narrower that age range is. The older your characters get, you have a little bit of flexibility. A 40 year old and a 45 year old and a 50 year old all look relatively the same. So just keep that in mind. Um, as you're filling this out, you wanna fill it out as though you're making the actors as interested as possible. Last important thing is to give your project a name. Untitled student film, untitled short film. Shoot, when we're working with big casting offices and they're posting untitled WB feature, the actors are not interested. So even if it's a working title, give your project a name and feel free to change that up later. Does that all make sense? Cool. <clears throat> so that's the first step in casting is getting your casting notice out and making it interesting. We have two other things that you can post jobs for on the site. The first is voiceover casting, which normally I only cover with animation students, but since COVID I'm seeing film production students use voiceover in really creative ways. The voiceover casting process is very similar. The form just looks slightly different. The one thing that I'll caution you about with voiceover is that voiceover actors throw their voice and so when we're talking about age or gender with voiceover, we're only talking about the character. Do not be shocked when someone wildly outside of your age range applies for your job with voiceover because that's what they do. And then crew, I know for the most part you crew each other's projects, but if you need additional production support or you um, are looking for post-production help, whatever that looks like, right? Um, you can post crew jobs onto the site too using all the same promo code. The, oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought someone had a question. Um, when you're posting your casting notice, your voiceover notice, your crew notice, the, the cost to post a notice on backstage is $25. Don't ever pay that fee. We have a great partnership with your school and part of that partnership is free access to the casting platform. So that code on screen right now, the LMU cast is your code for life. The way that it works is every time you post a casting notice on the site, you're gonna enter that in the promo code and hit apply, it'll zero out the cost. It's yours for things you're working on for school. It's yours for things you're working on outside of school. It follows you after graduation. Write that code down and keep it somewhere safe. You can use it as often as you need it. If for any reason the code is not working, reach out to us. Don't whip out your credit card and just pay for your notice. Reach out to Backstage, either me directly or someone in our chat center. Um, they'll be able to figure out why your code is not working for you. All good? Cool. That's the most important thing I'm going to say all night is how to not have to pay that fee. So make sure you've written that code down somewhere safe. The other thing the code does is it alerts me that you've posted a notice. And so I can go in and check your notice and make sure you're having a good experience on the site. The technical of navigating the site is pretty simple. I used to do a very thorough click through of the site. In these days, the site is pretty user friendly. You'll start with your casting dashboard where you'll see all your projects. You'll see a link to start new projects. The most important part of this page is down at the bottom of the collaborators. <clears throat> if you're going to hold virtual auditions and you need teammates in that room or you need a reader in that virtual audition room, they have to be added as a collaborator to your project. It's super simple to do. They just need one of those free filmmaker accounts and you'll be able to send them off an invite. 
you add them project by project, they won't be able to see everything else that you're working on, but they'll be able to access your audition schedules. And if you're working in teams, your collaborators can also sort talent, invite people to audition, message talent, the whole shebang. So um, make sure that you're adding collaborators where you need them. You can even add a reader as a collaborator for your audition day and then remove their access the next day. So it doesn't have to be a permanent thing. Super simple to do, but very important that you do it if you need readers or production teammates in your audition room. As you're navigating the site, you're gonna see a ton of choices to sort talent. Thumbs up, thumbs down moves them pretty simple into yes and no. You can then manually move people into audition or callback or cast. Um, use these sorting tools. The actors don't see any of it. You're not gonna hurt anyone's feelings by giving them a thumbs down. If someone like this is my favorite example of this, clearly Lily is wildly outside of the age range that we're looking for. We're gonna give her a quick thumbs down. She moves over into no. We've not hurt her feelings because she doesn't know that that happened. Um, the other thing is, like I said, our actors are all paying a flat monthly fee. So look for full profiles. If you run into someone with one photo and zero additional information, that person is paying the same amount as someone with photos and video and an audio reel and their resume, look for well-filled out profiles as you're navigating the site. Um, let's talk really briefly about auditions. I love auditions. I think it's the most exciting part of casting. Um, as we're prepping for an audition, we're testing actors for their skill and their directability and personality, right? You need both things on set. The best actor in the world who's gonna nail their performance and hit all their lines, and is a total jerk and a nightmare to work with is not the actor for you, right? Vice versa is also true. I've had actors on set who are the kindest people in the world who we really like, but they can't hit their mark or say their line to save their life. You need both, right? So you're gonna audition for both. You're gonna choose the audition side specifically, usually around one to two pages. And then if you're having your auditions in person, which I know is a big if right now, most people in the industry are still doing remote auditioning. Um, it should never, ever happen in your home, your apartment, your dorm, your house. Um, audition should always happen somewhere public, like a classroom is a great place for an audition. However, I will say lots of actors are really ready to be back on set and not yet ready to do in-person auditions. So even if you're holding in-person auditions, do some form of virtual auditions for the actors that aren't ready for that. Don't lose out on people because you're holding auditions just in person. And then make sure you have a team. The general rule is that if you're the director on, in the room, you're going to be directing actors. That's your whole job for the day, which means you need someone else reading with your actors, someone else running the schedule. <clears throat> Having a team around you frees you up as the director to really get creative in these audition rooms. Um, and then make sure you're scheduling about 10 or 15 minutes per actor so you have time to work through your audition material more than once. Nothing under five minutes ever. You're going to get behind and then your whole day is going to be thrown into chaos. You want to aim for somewhere in that 10 to 15 minute mark. And then on your audition day, the most important thing you can know about auditioning actors is that auditioning, that actors walking into an audition have a really high level of anxiety. Even for a student film, even for an unpaid student film, actors are super nervous coming into the audition room, which means Nervous people with a high level of anxiety don't take direction very well. So your first job as a director is to bring that anxiety level down with a nice, friendly greeting. It doesn't have to be anything major. I start off every audition with some form of, my name is Christina, I'm the director on this project. We're really excited to have you in today. Do you have any questions before we get started, right? As simple as that, just to remind them that they're there because you already like them, right? And then plan to work through your sides twice. The way that your auditions should sort of run is to let your actors read through the material with the reader once, give them some direction, and then let them read through it again. If the first read is bad, sometimes that's because they are a bad actor, right? They're not right for your project. But a lot of times it's because they didn't understand what you were looking for. And so if you write someone off with a bad first audition, you're missing out on really great talent. Instead, let them read through the material. No matter how good or bad that first read is, you're gonna direct them a little bit. Build in some stakes, remind them of the context, all of those great directing skills that you're learning in class, you're gonna apply here in this moment. And then you're gonna let them read again. Even if the first read is excellent, it's the best acting you've ever seen in your entire life. Awesome. Now you know that their skill level is high. Now you're gonna direct them to change something about their performance to see if this is someone who collaborates well with you. That's what we're testing for in the audition room is who is gonna be a good creative collaborator for your set. <clears throat> so you wanna make sure that you're testing for both things. 
the other thing is to remember that we're not looking for Oscar winning performances in an audition room. I can't tell you how many first time filmmakers I've helped with casting who have said, I really loved this actress. She did so much right, but she didn't cry. The, the script says she cries, but we're not actually doing that in the audition room, right? You have lots and lots of time to build up an actor's performance. You're just seeing who has the skill set, who gets it, and who is going to be a good creative collaborator for the on set, right? As long as you have both of those things, you have plenty of time in rehearsals to build up to those ultimate performances that you're going to want to see on set. Um, and then the last thing is that if you need to see a skill from an actor on set, they need to speak, a multi speak multiple languages, they need to sing, they need to play the cello, you need to test for that in your audition rooms. Um, actors are sort of famous for saying, yeah, no problem, I know how to juggle, and then not actually having that skill, even if it's on their skill sheet. Um, so if you need to see a sample of, a, uh, if you need to see a skill on set, you need to see a sample as part of your audition. That's when I would say move your audition from being 15 minutes to 20 minutes to give yourself time to test that skill. Let them know that you're going to say, here's your audition sides. We also need to see you play the cello for five minutes, you know, have them prepare a little something just to test for it. Lots and lots of actors will say, yeah, no problem. I can speak French and then try to teach themselves French by your shoot date, right? Get a test for it in the audition room and take breaks. Audition days are really, really exhausting for young filmmakers, even virtual. I mean, we've now had two years of virtual auditions and it is a long day. So if someone no shows, if you can build breaks into your schedule so that you have them, you're gonna have a much better audition experience. Now, the thing is, like I said, most auditioning is happening remotely right now. You have a few different options for this. First is self-tape. Self-tape's been around forever. Um, when you're sending off a self-tape request through the site, the way that that works is that you're going to choose your actor and send them the request. You're going to give them a little bit of context for what you're looking for, because in a self-tape, they're going to go off and record your audition sides and send the tape back to you. Um, they don't have the benefit of having you in the audition room directing them. And so you want to give them a little bit of context for what you're looking for, right? Self-tapes are a really good first round. You'll attach your script sides there. You'll send off the message. The actor will upload their tape and it'll remain part of their backstage profile. Super simple, very easy to navigate. But like I said, you're not getting a chance to direct them and you don't get a sense of the actor's personality. So as I mentioned, self-tape should be a good first round choice. And then get those actors in front of you in some way, shape or form. Make sure that they actually can act as well as their tape represents and get a sense of their personality because you don't want to cast someone from a self-tape that turns out to be a jerk on your set. You guys just don't have time for that. The other option is, like I said, virtual auditions. Virtual auditions are super simple to set up through the site. If you'd rather jump off platform and use something like Zoom, also totally an option, but we wanted to give you an option right there in backstage. It's all very secure. Um, like the self tapes, the, it's gonna automatically record your audition room for you and save it to the talent's profile. And they're very easy to set up. You're just gonna choose the actors that you wanna have audition and you're gonna build them into a um, schedule. You can really customize the schedule 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Like I said, I wouldn't go anything under 10. And in fact, I would aim towards that 15 minute mark per actor. You'll put the actors in, you'll send off their request and attach the script sides. And then when it comes time for your audition day, this is the schedule that you're gonna work from. Each actor will have that little purple camera icon next to them. And that's how you're gonna access the audition room. This is why it's so important to add collaborators to your job. That way, they can see this page and get in and out of those audition rooms for you. <clears throat> um, because each actor has their own audition room, there's no chance that, like if I'm running one big long Zoom session, there's no chance that someone comes in early and interrupts someone else's audition. Everybody's in a separate room. <clears throat> Pardon me. Like I said, I'm in Colorado and I am allergic to everything here. Um, so I'm a little coffee. But it makes for a very simple day because this, this page is gonna stay open in one tab. And every time you click someone's camera icon, it's gonna open up this virtual audition page in the second tab. Like Zoom, you have lots of options as far as turning on and off your video or your audio. You can even screen share with your actors and chat with them if there's something wrong with the video or audio. When you're done with your virtual audition, you're gonna run this just like we talked about with the in-person audition, letting the actors read through twice, giving them a little bit of direction in between. You always thank actors for their time when you're done. Um, you'll click out of that tab and it'll take you right back to your schedule. Very, very simple to navigate. Takes about 30 minutes after your audition is done and then it'll download itself to the actor's profile and you can watch your auditions there. When you're done, 
with your audition day, I think you should give yourself a little break. Like I said, those audition days are exhausting. And so usually the next day, um, I would advise you, especially because of COVID, to go through all of your roles and make your first choice, right? Choose the actors that you want. But in this moment, while you're watching your tapes and making decisions, give yourself a few backup options, a second choice, third choice, even a fourth choice. Because of COVID, the production, not only it's COVID itself where an actor could get sick and not be able to do your production, but because of COVID production schedules for things like commercial shooting in LA have become very chaotic. <laughs> and so you wanna make sure that you've given yourself some backup so that if your first choice says no right off the bat, you don't have to go back and rewatch audition choice, uh, audition tapes and get a second choice. You wanna have that second choice laid out. It's just about picking up the phone and calling the next person. Heaven forbid you get to a week out from your production date and your actor gets sick or they book something big. You wanna be able to not have to stop everything in your pre-production and go back and watch audition tapes. Having your first choice, second choice, third choice lined up means you just move down the line and call people. You're only gonna call actors that you're hiring. You never wanna call an actor and say, hey, great job at the audition, we're not gonna hire you, right? You wanna only let actors hear from you with good news. It also protects your ability to, if you call your first choice and they say no, you're gonna call your second choice and pretend they were your first choice. All the actors on your set should think they were your first choice for the role. Um, that's sort of the, the audition process in a nutshell. And I know that you've got lots of other resources around auditioning, but the process through Backstage is pretty simple. A couple of additional resources that we have for you. Um, like I said, I'm gonna send this all over as a PDF so you have access to all of these links. But the most important thing on here that I wanted to point out is that we are offering free crew profiles for students right now. So that link that you see the second bullet point down, if you want to not only hire crew for your projects, but sign up for Backstage as a crew member, that's the link for you. Um, you can sign up, get your projects or get your profile started and start applying for PA work or camera work or whatever you're looking for. Um, we're st starting to partner with some really exciting organizations and they're getting great crew jobs up onto the site. So it's all very, very exciting. If you have any questions about crew, Jen is my counterpart over on the crew side, and that's her email address. You'll have that linked in the, in the document as well. Um, and then I just wanted to remind you of your promo code, LMUCAST. Do not pay for casting on backstage. It should be free for you every time you use it. If you need help, which I know questions will come up, the process is challenging once you get into the weeds of it, there's two ways that you can reach out for help. The first, my email address is down at the bottom of the page. I love helping film students. You guys are welcome to email me anytime throughout your process. If reaching out one-on-one -on -one is not your jam, I run a group student filmmaker office hours help session every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Um, you can jump in anytime. It's like a standing Zoom link. I'm usually there for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and you can jump in anytime to ask for help with your specific project, to ask general casting questions, whatever you need. But if you'd like to, you're also welcome to email me one-on-one. -on -one. I love helping film students. So, um, all right, that's my spiel. I'm gonna Oh, exit that's out. fantastic. And so also sure. that open hours is so valuable. You it's know, been great. If you're, yeah, if you're not getting a response, you're like, God, what? maybe I, I did something wrong. You can reach out yeah. to her, but you can also just talk to her directly. You know, it's like, God, I'm you know, any other advice, here's what I've written about my, you know, this is the stuff and it takes a while to learn how to do it. Christine. The other thing that I would say is, you know, as you um, cast your projects, if you're casting talent from backstage and you finish your project and you think it's super rad, please send it to me. I love seeing student work. And occasionally there's opportunities for us to highlight students in our editorial sections. We love to hear from you when you've cast talent from backstage and and you're really pleased with how your films turn out. So always feel free to share those. Oh, that's nice. Well. Yeah. So, so um, there is the, just to review again, how do you talk to your second choice? Yeah. So the way that I would do it is I only call my first choices. If your first choice says no, or your first choice is yes at first, and then no, two days later, they've booked something big or they've gotten ill or they have to go to whatever it is. Right. You're going to pick up the phone. You're going to say, first of all, to your first choice, no problem. You always want to keep that relationship intact. So you never want to flip out on them for dropping out. You know, it can be tricky when they drop out close to your shoot date. Your second choice, you're going to pick up the phone and call them just like they were your first choice. If you're more than a week out from your shoot date, 
You're going to call them and say, hey, this is Christina. I'm from Loyola, Loyola Marymount. Remember you auditioned for me. We'd love to hire you for our short film. If you're within five days of your shoot date, that's when it's okay to call someone and say, hey, we just had someone drop out. But you always want to frame it as we're so excited. We would love to work with you. This is a great opportunity for us because we were really sad that we didn't get to pick you the first time, right? Your second choice should always be reminded that you really, really want to work with them. Does that make sense? Yeah, cool. It's, it's... You just never want to start a conversation with an actor with, hey, this is Christina from Oil Marymount. My first choice drop, drop, just dropped out on us. Are you still free? Right? Doesn't make actors feel great about themselves. So you want to always frame it as, I'm so excited to work with you. Yeah. So sorts of conversations you have on set with actors or at anybody, right? They're, yes. they're nuanced, they're, you know, the positive. It should be, uh, yeah. you know, a part of your creative team. I'm, I'm, I'm always saying that this is a team sport and actors are part of that team. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can treat them as collaborators, treat them with respect, you're going to have a much better experience as a filmmaker. Any other questions? Sorry, I know that that was a ton of information just thrown at you all at once. Yeah, so, so if it's if a week, like a week out, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so if it's a week out or more, pretend they're your first choice, that it just took you a long time to make your casting decisions. Yeah. Or, you know, I you know hate to throw the school under the bus, but I've had students call actors and say, sorry, the school has to approve all our casting. It took forever. You were our first choice all along. Whatever you have to do to kind of salvage that moment, go for it. <laughs> the, oh, so it, the free student account, the filmmaker accounts are always free. Um, so you'll see in the PDF document um, how to sign up for your free filmmaker account. And then that LMU cast promo code is how you're gonna post notices for free. Yeah, so as long as you're using the um, LMU cast promo code, you'll be able to post for free. So mm -hmm. backstage casting. Yeah, here, let me see if I can pull it from the document. Oh yeah, here we go. So you I'm don't going have to the PDF me. document, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna send the PDF over to Laura and Deb as soon as we wrap up here today and then they'll make it available for you all. But along the way, I know questions will arise, questions come up kind of as you dig into the process. As that happens, reach out. I'm, I'm happy to help in whatever way I can. Um, and especially if you posted on Backstage and you're not getting a good response from the actors, that is a great time to reach out to me because I can boost your notice, I can feature your notice, whatever it takes to get you a better response. Or if you're casting for something very, very specific, like I was helping students last semester who were looking for 11 and 12 year old boys who spoke fluent Vietnamese, which was a little bit of a challenge to find. If you know that you're searching for something very specific like that, reach out to me ahead of time and there's some additional resources I can throw your way. In those situations, I would also look for, um, there is not the PDF. You don't have the PDF yet. You don't have the PDF yet. That will be sent to me and we will put it in the handbook, okay? So I know you, uh, people keep asking about the PDF. It will be sent to me and then we'll put it in the handbook. This was just to give you the basic information so you know that. Um, so we'll put it in the handbook in the next day or two. Um, Yes, and anytime you're so specific like that, you sort of also want to go to communities, club, you know, clubs, community centers. Yeah. That might, hey man, There's I'm a filmmaker. More... I'm doing this. This is what I'm looking yeah. for. Put a sign up. You know, those sorts of things. Probably put a sign up in Vietnamese. You know, these are the sorts of things you probably want to do. But but if you are looking for something specific and you know casting is going to be a challenge, shoot me an email and we'll set time to chit chat and throw some extra resources at you to help you find what you're looking for. Um, we're gonna let Christina go because she's with her family right now in Colorado. And, we're gonna, <laughs> and I just wanna really thank you for joining us while you are with your family. Of and course, uh, just know she's always available at that 11 o'clock on Tuesdays. Again, that'll all be a part of the, the PDF that she does send to us, but also 
um, a part of backstage or just in that PDF, do you think? Um, yeah. It's the uh, time so they can remember that time. Yeah, it's just 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. Um, but yeah, our casting team also has that info. So if you, for some okay. reason, can't get a hold of my email address, reach out to the casting team and I'll be able to give you that link too. So the second part of this is that more casting resources from Andrew Van Houston, who just graduated, who had done some social media casting and did casting direction with a lot of, hi, it's nice to see you, uh, did uh, with a lot of students. Thank you, Christina. I thank mean, you all. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi, Andrew. It's nice to see you. Hello, happy happy to be uh, back remotely to talk more about uh, casting. Yeah, enjoyed um, it. Awesome. We did a great job with uh, our casting, uh, a lot of our projects, a lot of our thesis projects. So um, please feel free to share your screen and maybe present um, some alternate uh, alternative ways to find uh, cast or to tap into uh, different sorts of um, actors, um, and some of which uh, Christina was saying, I think you just support in terms of how to talk to actors and and um, you know best practices. So um, it's all yours. Thank you for coming from New York. I think. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you. And hello, everyone. Um, so like. Laura mentioned, my name's Andrew. I just recently graduated in May um, with my master's degree. And one thing I really did like uh, about working on student projects was the casting of it because you guys work so hard on like writing your scripts and telling your stories and then finding people to um, kind of help bring these characters to life is such an exciting time, but also it can be very uh, nerve wracking. And so um, my goal is to kind of just calm all potential nerves you guys have and um, answer any questions and kind of just give you some like tips in terms of like a student perspective of like how to uh, succeed when it comes to casting and um, what Christina said like a lot of that like was very very accurate and she did a really good job and so I pretty much am echoing like everything um, she says but I'm going to give you kind of a few tips of like how to talk to actors and maybe how to promote um, your projects in a whole different way. Um, so one thing that some students might be considering is doing a casting in person and I would strongly advise to do all casting remotely even kind of your final decisions personally um, just because you're going to have higher attendance rates a lot of times when you do casting in person a lot of people don't want to show up mainly because of um, bad traffic where to park um, just getting there and just spending so much time so just if you keep everything online it just makes your life easier and um, when I started casting my first year at LMU, like I did it in person and then my second and third year because of COVID, it was um, all online and just the attendance from online casting, it just surprised you. Like I had very few people um, like not show up. Um, everyone usually shows up and you're less likely to get COVID and no one wants to get COVID. Um, so kind of what Christine was talking about, you guys are going to be posting casting notices and I want to kind of go on a little bit of different websites you can use in addition to backstage. Um, but every one of your casting notices should have like the following, like a log line, the list of characters and the descriptions. I say if you are looking for a very specific person, for example, like say you were casting for a tall girl and you're looking for like a six foot seven white tall girl, you want to put that in your notice just because like you're going to get a bunch of other people interested that don't fit the criteria. And then you're going to be kind of like wasting time just searching through people looking for that like six foot seven um, girl you're looking for. So I say if you can be specific, be specific. But if you want to be open ended, like go for it. Um, just know that you'll get a lot of um, submissions, which is which is great. But you're going to be looking through a lot. Um, compensation. I agree. Um, most of the projects you guys are probably going to do are more um, meal copy credit. Um, so just make sure you put that in there. If you're going to be paying, I'd say make sure you show either an hourly rate or a daily rate. Um, some websites will be specific on like which ones they prefer and will be like, we can't post this unless you talk about like which rate you're looking for. Um, so keep that in mind. And then um, gas money might be something else you want to compensate. And I always say like, maybe if you're not going to pay them um, a lot or you're going to do meal copy credit, maybe just be nice and give them a gift card at the end just to show your appreciation. 
and like maybe they'll want to work with you again in the future um filming and rehearsal dates are also just very important and then location and I think it's funny because when I've done a casting call in the past, I put Westchester because like that's where Loyola Marymount University is. But then I had people from Westchester, New York, like submit um, in their uh, application. So I just say, just say Los Angeles, just to make things easier. Um, and then maybe Santa Monica, if you really want to, or if it's in like the desert, like be specific, but uh, Los Angeles, I think is fine for the most part. And like I said, casting websites usually require you to add this information. Um, so if you want to make your casting notice look pretty, um, feel free to like use Canva or Photoshop. I don't know if you guys have experience, but these are, um, just some casting calls that like just by Canva, just to make it look a little more prettier. And so if you want to post it on like Facebook or Instagram, um, just to get like more people's attention, I highly recommend doing so. Um, so like, for example, this call on the left um, kind of just gives you a little tease of what the film's about, the dates, log line, the characters. And then um, for this call in particular, we were looking for like LGBTQ plus actors. So that's just something you might want to emphasize if you are looking for um, actors or like actors with certain skills. Um, if you need someone to sing opera or speak French, like you could put that in like a prettier casting notice if you want to. Um, and I recommend creating an email that's not your LMU email for like any film production, just because you're already going to be getting a lot of emails for school. And if you're mixing school with like casting, that could be a little funky. So just something to keep in mind. Um, so if you made like a really pretty casting call like that, where could you post it? Uh, Facebook to start, um, Instagram, Insta stories. Um, two Facebook groups that I recommend are LMU casting and LA non-union actor casting call. And so like these QR codes on the side, if you just wanna take like 30 seconds to join those groups, I would like highly recommend doing so right now, just so you have other places to post. Um, and it's good because you also get to hear about other projects going on if you're interested in such thing um, yourself. And then word of mouth, just telling your friends about it, like you wouldn't be surprised, you'd be surprised like how many times you can like get just someone wanting to um, put their, hat in the ring just by word of mouth. And then casting websites, which I'll go over in a second, um, are Backstage, LA Casting, and Breakdown Express. Um, so is everyone good with the QR codes? I don't wanna, okay, by the by the three faces I see, I feel like we're good. So I'm gonna move on. Um, you know, so, Andrew, I, I'll also say to people here, I, I know m many of you probably don't even do Facebook anymore. But a lot of the actors you want do so and the, and these groups are really easier i mean facebook is good with these sorts of groups you know so if you can get them hey i'm a film student i'm going to be casting that's why i want to get onto this group it, it it is a it is an account you probably need to go back to whether you ever had it in your life or not right andrew yeah and even kind of bouncing off that i feel um like if you're looking for older people to cast in particular they're all over facebook um so i would definitely recommend getting on it but instagram obviously is good um if you're casting for more of a college age level um and then here are the three uh networks i recommend um backstage which christina like went over very well i highly i highly recommend it everything's very like organized and you're able to kind of put all of your information there and you're gonna get a lot of um, actors interested. And like she mentioned, they're paying to be a part of that website. So you know, they're gonna give 100%. Um, LA Casting, I don't believe in, I haven't been on it in a while, but like LA Casting, I think anyone can join. Um, I recommend LA Casting if you are looking for an older audience, um, but they definitely, um, you don't have to pay to be on LA Casting. So if someone isn't like giving a lot of, um, information on their websites or their reels or their portfolios, then I would not uh, recommend casting them just because um, they're not putting in enough work. But I do like LA casting, um, just how it's all organized. And then Breakdown Express is another one I recommend. Um, I find a lot of people on Breakdown Express because you're um, it's being sent to like a bunch of people in a wide audience that you usually don't see on backstage in LA casting. Um, the only thing I just kind of, advise people on is when you join Breakdown Express, they're going to have you just sign a little like contract to basically be like, oh, um, 
you have to credit Breakdown Express in your film, which is really no big deal. Um, but you just have to sign a few things. And then if, if it's your first time using it, you might just have to call them and they'll guide you through it. So it, they're very helpful in like guiding you through it. Um, you just have to keep in mind, you'll have to give them credit if you do use that website. But I would just recommend going on all three of these websites and just playing around with them, seeing where you fit and which one works best for you. Um, so after you kind of post your casting notices and casting calls, you're gonna get a lot of people interested and exciting for your project. Um, so what should you do next? Christina talked a little bit about um, the self tape and that's what I would recommend your first step being regardless. Um, you're gonna kind of select actors that you want to see do self tapes. And so you're gonna get a lot of pictures and you wanna be specific in the actors and actresses you choose. Um, and I recommend picking um, actors with strong resumes and reels. So you're gonna, um, if an actor is good at their job, they're gonna be posting a resume with all of their credits and a video kind of highlighting their acting experiences. Take a look at those. You usually only need to watch it for like 15 seconds to know whether or not you're interested in casting them. Um, so don't spend like a whole day looking at um, reels that actors submit, but just narrow it down. Give a thumbs up to the ones you like. Um, picking actors with strong cover letters is what also I recommend. Um, when you are posting your casting notices, you could say something along the line of, let me know why this role interests you. And you'll be surprised like how many people will kind of share why they're attached to the role. Perhaps, for example, you were doing a film about a struggling um, father-son relationship and you're looking for um, someone to play the son and you're like, please let me know why this interests you. Um, someone might admit that they're dealing with problems with their own family and they can relate to the role. Or perhaps if you're doing something about a musician, they could write in their cover letter that they play the instrument that you're looking for. Um, just to help you narrow things down a lot easier, um, especially if you're on websites like Breakdown, and backstage where a bunch of people could be submitting for your project. And then I also just say pick actors that you think might surprise you. You might just look around and you might see someone who looks like they could do the role or you just look at someone's um, video and you're just kind of surprised with what they do. So I'd say take risks here and there, but you do not need to select everyone for self tapes. I highly uh, recommend not doing that because you're gonna be sending a lot of requests that way. Um, so submitting self tapes usually involves kind of what Christina says, you're gonna send sides um, to the actors. And so I think if you guys aren't familiar with sides, it's just a way for the actor to kind of play with your script a little bit, read it out loud into a form of a video. Um, I say, if you're gonna send actor sides, keep them short, but enough to get an idea of the character. Um, a lot of uh, first year, I believe at LMU, you're gonna be making films that are more non-verbal and non-speaking. But I still feel that it's important to get an idea of who um, the actor is. So I just say, find a short monologue on the internet. It can be from your favorite movie. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be something from your script, but just something from like a movie. And just have the actors read that to you. Um, if you want them to read in a certain direction, let them know in an email being like, hey, I'd love to see a self-tape from you. And give maybe a little context of your script and how you'd want them to read that um, side. Um, oh, and so Christina was talking a little bit about how you want to, for example, if someone is playing the saxophone, like knowing that they can play the saxophone before you cast them, because a lot of people say, yes, they can do things. So I think a self tape is a great opportunity for you to have that person show um, their talent. So for example, if I'm casting a film where I need a saxophone player, I would say kind of after, the, after they read their self tape lines to share also a clip of them playing the saxophone. Therefore, you're just not wasting your time anymore if they really cannot play the saxophone. Um, give your actors at least a week to send self-tapes. And I usually say a week um, because a lot of times actors, what they do is they'll usually pick one day out of the week to record a bunch of self-tapes that they've requested um, just because either they don't have a friend to read with until a certain day or just because they also are working. So I say just give them a week. And then if they're a little late, consider that being a yellow flag. And then I'd say after you get all your self tapes, it's nice to organize them in a Google folder or Dropbox. Um, if you're the director and you're the only person casting, it, um, it might not hurt to share it with your producers, that folder, just so they can also like give you their two cents. Or if you're hiring a casting director, the casting director can also um, put all this in a Dropbox so the director can look. 
And after you look at all the self tapes, then that's when I recommend doing like a Zoom audition callback. And so well, usually- Can I ask, when you say self tapes, you don't mean tapes anymore. Like, like you just, you, you would just record yourself reading the lines. Exactly. And, and then they send you the, the, um, they send you a file. Yes. Correct. Exactly. Yeah, it's I funny. Just, Cause it's like, it was self tapes. It's still called self tapes. I, yeah. Self tape, self audition. Yeah. Isn't that funny? So just in case anybody here did not know what that meant, it just means you're doing it virtually and what you would imagine, which is record it on zoom on whatever record it send it over to me mm -hmm. yeah or and I, your phone I, and i always recommend just doing this to make sure the actor is um legit and being able to give you a performance that at least qualifies them to move on to like a callback audition and so um kind of as christina was showing you you can set up auditions on like a casting website um, but sometimes it's just easier to do it all on your own and kind of schedule it your own way. Because if, especially if you're like juggling through a bunch of different casting websites, um, just putting information in like a Google doc, like in the corner over here, like these are the times of the people auditioning and like what they're auditioning for. And then maybe you could also take note of like where you found them just so you have everything organized um, well. And then I recommend doing uh, 15, 20 minute audition slots. Like you do not need any more time like that. Uh, Christina said 15, which I would agree with, but you might like the extra five minutes to talk about um, the actor with your producer after they leave or with, um, if you're the casting director, talk to the director, just so you could have a conversation going about that person before the next person comes in. Um, and I say in a callback audition, you can use the same side or you could try something new. It really just depends on your um, vibe. Uh, I'd say if you're doing a monologue for like a nonverbal part, you could do the same side again for the callback as you did for the self tape. Um, and then this is how I kind of did auditions at LMU. And so you do not have to follow this, but this is what I would recommend. And a lot of it kind of repeats what Christina was talking about. So introductions, letting them know who you are, it just calms the nerves. Everyone's gonna be very nervous, especially if it's your first time casting um, for an actor. It's just being on Zoom with strangers can be very uh, scary. So always ask though, if you're gonna do it on Zoom or backstage, just let them know that you're gonna record it because um, you'll wanna look at it later, obviously. And so just having them agree to it, again, calms everything down. Um, and then just seeing if uh, the actor has any immediate questions before reading the sides. Um, it's very good if they do have questions because it means they're very curious about the role and then they can take the answers to your questions into the first time the actor reads the side. And so when the actor reads the side, kind of how Christina was mentioning, um, the director really should be the one paying attention to the actor. So if the director's in the room, in the Zoom room with a casting director reading sides to the actor, that's great, but the director should really not be the one reading the sides. They should be the one, excuse me, paying attention to the actor. And then um, when the director wants the actor to read it again, they can give notes and ask them to read it again in a good direction. Um, I always say, if you're kind of unsure how to give direction to an actor who does a good job or an actor who doesn't do a good job, uh, you could do a few things. One, you could suggest them to play the complete opposite of what they just read. Um, so say the character they're reading for is a very nervous character and they have a lot of nervous energy when they're reading it. Um, you as the director could suggest for them to play the opposite, playing a more um, character who's excited for something that's gonna happen. Um, and then the other thing I always do is like, if you're really, really not sure, what to do, just tell them to read it again as if they have to go to the bathroom. I think that's just a funny way to have actors um, read it again with something interesting in their head. So um, of course you guys can do whatever you want. That's just my um, tidbit. And then the actor will read the side again. And I usually say you only need an actor to read the side twice, maybe three times until you feel good. Um, at that point, you should know whether or not you wanna move forward with them. Um, but even if you don't want to move forward with them, I still think, again, it's important that you ask some questions to them because you might change your mind later on as you watch the tapes later that night. Um, 
So after they read the sides, I always recommend just asking them a few questions. So here's like a few questions I would consider. Um, what's something about yourself not related to movies or acting? I think, again, that just helps them calm the nerves and you as the director can have a conversation with your actor about something quirky you might find out about the person. Um, another question I strongly recommend is how have you worked with directors in the past? Um, have they worked on student films before? Will they respect the director? Do they like collaboration or are they a method actor? Um, these are all things you want to consider um, as you're kind of having this conversation. And then um, like some simple ones you could ask depending on your timing and how you feel is like, what's drawn them to the role? What would you do to prepare? Um, would they be interested in other roles? I say if you perhaps see them playing a different character, um, that's something you could ask then. Um, if your character is going to be intimate in any way, I highly suggest asking um, the actor if they're comfortable with an intimate scene, um, just because you don't want them to show up day one on set and find out that they're kissing their co-star. You know, that just makes things a little awkward. And then obviously I believe the rules now is every actor has to be vaccinated um, to be on set. And so I think there's a way of properly saying this without being like, are you vaccinated? Yes or no, because I feel like that could be very awkward. So one way that I suggest is kind of, if I, if I were, say I was interviewing Laura, for example, I could be like, um, Laura, I know there's a lot of craziness going on in the world with COVID. It's kind of forced LMU to, um, have more of a COVID safety set where everyone has to be wearing masks and is six feet apart. Do you feel comfortable with this? And usually at that point, Laura will admit that she's vaccinated and she has no problem with anything on the set. Um, so that's just a, a way to kind of ask without being very uh, direct about it. And then um, saying your thank yous and goodbyes and then end the recording and you can talk about it then. So that's just sort of my uh, suggested audition format. Of course, you don't have to um, do that if you don't want to, but that's just how I suggest doing it. And I feel like it's worked in the past. Yeah, and I agree. Um, sorry. No yeah, problem. Andrew, I agree. It's also my school is requiring us to have proof that everybody is up to date on their vaccinations. Are you able to provide this proof uh, for my school? It, it's for me in the school, that it, all our sets are 100% vaccinated, you know? So you just wanna say oh, that's a requirement. Yeah, and just, you can, I mean, you can like blame the school if you have to, like sure. in worst that, case scenario. Things have been done twice tonight, so that's all good. <laughs> Christina, um, Christina said that it's like, uh, my school has to approve all casting. So they came to this decision late. That's why I'm calling you up, you know, went for the second choice. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, totally it's, fine. It's it honestly, makes, it's totally fine. It makes things good. And then yeah. um, I'm kind of, I'm almost done. Don't worry. But like in terms of um, if you want to move forward and have two actors uh, read together. I do recommend chemistry reads and I recommend doing that on Zoom too. Um, at that point, you, if you're doing chemistry reads, I, I say do it with the actors you feel confident with casting and spend a little bit of more time instead of 15 minutes, maybe spend 20 and 30 minutes um, doing um, some working with these two actors and see if you can work well with them and do they bounce off well together. And I always say in terms of chemistry read, like compliment the actors after they do a read through because they've already put so much effort into this, this work, you just want to show how much you appreciate it. Um, and then before casting, just any like last minute things, uh, always think about flexibility and schedule. Are they going to be a pain to schedule around like rehearsals and shooting dates? Appearance. I think this one's just funny and you should always keep in mind, like if you're casting a couple maybe check to see what their heights are just so one, if one's like super tall and one's super short, like if you're cool with that, cool, but always just keep in mind of like height and those things and consider all red and green flags. And then offer letters or you could off, offer phone calls, whatever you prefer. Um, you don't have to do it immediately that night, but like once you feel confident with who you want, send your offers as soon as your decision's been made. I say casting director, director or producer should send the email and just include role, compensation, whether that's meal copy credit or a daily or hourly rate, um, the term in terms of how long you're going to be working with these actors for, um, contact information, and get them to accept as soon as they can. So um, 
you can send any contracts you need to with them. I believe if you're like casting union, for example, like union really likes contracts and all of that. So you'd want to get those done earlier than later. Um, my suggestion, just like Christina, hold off on telling people no. If you need them for a part of a later date, call and act as if they are the first choice. I can, I've can i experienced with so many other people like last minute cancellations where they're trying to find a whole new actor and it's just difficult because they told a bunch of people no. Um, my suggestion is if you're wanting to be like polite about it, because I know like people love to hear um, yes or no, but how to be polite from it is like after every audition or every time you like send an email after you get a bunch of self tapes or whatever, um, just say something along the lines of, thank you so much. Um, either myself or someone else will let you know if we have any further questions or want to move on from you. That's just a polite way of saying, if we don't hear from you, like we're probably not going to be working with you in the future. But you should just say that with everyone and just makes them kind of aware of the situation. And I believe that's it. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And then my email here is below too. Feel free to contact me in any way. So yeah, that's great. What last part? Um, feel free to ask the question. Oh, oh. The email. He, he's yeah. He sort of yeah. About how I think that. well, usually say um, after a, after you get a bunch of self tapes, you're probably not going to want to email a bunch of people saying no after self tapes. And so um, after you receive a self tape, you could email them and be like, "Thank you so much. We'll let you know if you're moving on in the process or something along those lines." You can say it that way. I don't think there's a lot of hard feelings with actors if you don't respond to them um, because they're expecting that. Yeah. I think that's just been the protocol for a while. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun. Hopefully that doesn't stress y'all out in any ways, but very happy to answer any questions in the future if you guys have them. Any, any questions, anybody? I mean, you've heard here that sometimes on student films, people drop out, you know, and it does happen, um, do have uh, backups, you know, COVID, they can't come to set with COVID. Mm -hmm. So you are thinking about backups, but you're also thinking, also thinking about writing or not writing, but, you know, if you have 10 actors, that's a lot to juggle, you know what I mean? So, you know, think about, this is a step process. Learning how to do this is a step process. I mean, a couple of people learning how to work with them together. This is where it all kind of gets started, you know, two, three, four, whatever it is, is sort of a reasonable ensemble to kind of play with or, or so on. And, and to navigate, because I mean, now you're understanding how complicated the, just the casting process is, right? So uh, that's all, you know, th those are suggestions. Like take it a step up, you know, as you're doing your films. For those of you doing 200s here, you're casting LMU people. And um, because you, you are not allowed right now to not cast LMU. Um, so for uh, intermediate and advanced, you can cast outside, but only LMU. And we'll be having open casting sessions uh, for those as well. So you have like the theater uh, people from LMU. Um, so you can uh, tap into that talented group. It's actually kind of been working kind of well. But anyway, any more questions for Andrew specifically of anything he said? Pay, SAG, any things like that? Anybody have any questions? <laughs> I guess it's that was perfect. Problem. We're all tired. It's, it's been a long day for us too. Uh, Andrew, thank you. Um, feel free to reach out. We're going to have all these resources in the handbook under casting. And uh, it was really nice of you to come, Andrew. Um, and also um, um, adding those other places, you know, on Facebook and those sorts of things. So Thank you all for coming and um, I will stop recording.